Hello and welcome to MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. I'm Paul Hobden, and with me today I have Ian Solomon from Moja Media. Welcome, Ian. Thank you. Tell us a bit more about Moja. So, Paul, Moja is a, a travel business that specifically focuses on publishing in the print and online space. Um, we've got 18 employees. Uh, and essentially it's hinged around three core brands that we own, uh, Portfolio Collection, Solomon's Guide and Moja Heritage Collection. And then we've got a, a, a lot of other titles that are what you'd call contract publishing. We do on behalf of the Tourism Grading Council, we've done work for Joburg Tourism, we do work for Ekeleni Municipality, uh, the Sabi Sand Reserve, the Medikwe Game Reserve, uh, and we do quite a lot of work with Visa, uh, putting in travel products for them that have really worked. And it has a long, a long history. Yeah, well, the business itself uh, depends how you how you look at it. Uh, but my dad started uh, Solomon's Guide, what is now Solomon's Guide, in 1971. Uh, he was uh, marketing director at Hex River Textiles, and was kind of said, either go to Utenaig or that's it. And he wanted to stay in Cape Town, so he went on his own as I was born. So with his fourth fourth child, he became an entrepreneur, having worked in corporate for 15 years. It's origins in a family business? Absolutely. And now you've got a partner that you work with? Yeah, so I, I joined my father in 1999, worked with him for three or four years, learning the ropes, uh, building the relationships cross-generationally, which is always really important in a family business. And uh, actually at my very first in Darby in 1999, I met James Delaney, who is my business partner now. And in about 2003, he approached me with a concept, which is Heritage Collection, which I mentioned in the beginning. So that's our little red guidebook to all the uh, day attractions and activities with the Heritage Slant in tourism. And we launched that together as a joint venture in 2003 uh, and took on a whole lot of other projects. And then one day we woke up and we went, look, we've got two companies. We're calculating who gets what. Uh, the joint ventures became very cumbersome in terms of we didn't have a home for all our products. So in early 2010, we, we merged it all and created Mojo Media. What advice would you give someone else that's entering into a partnership because you know, it can go one of two ways. Yeah, and they do often go the one way. So I think where James and I are strong is that we, we have very clear skill sets, uh, which cross over in a good way. So we're not uh, in each other's sandpits. Uh, and we got to know each other. We got to work with each other for five good years in a situation where we weren't married. Uh, so it's, you know, it's kind of living, <laughs> living with your partner, I suppose, to getting married, which might not be the best advice. But I think in business, you know, to build that level of trust, I think it's important really to understand how each other work uh, before you throw it into an entity with a shareholders agreement and, and all the rest that goes with it. So it's worked really well for us to have that uh, kind of period of getting to know how we, how we function. Ian, the portfolio collection is a, a recent acquisition for you guys. Tell us how that fitted in with your business. So as you know, Portfolio is a really established brand in the industry. Uh, it's been going 30 years, started by Liz, where it's been done a long time back. Um, yeah, it's a pioneer in, 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 its, in its form and in the business model from the early days, really bringing the kind of country houses and boutique establishments into a collection that uh, the independent traveler can interact with. So about four years ago, James and I uh, had a coffee with Liz at Indaba and said, so what's your plans for succession? Uh, and at that point, uh, she had no immediate plans. And uh, every year, we had a, a lunch or a breakfast or a coffee and just spoke about where it was at. In the beginning of this year, early January, she called up and said, it, it feels like the right time now to, to try and do a deal. An acquisition is a, is a big thing for a, an entrepreneurial business. What has been some of the learnings for you guys? I think uh, one of the main learnings is that it's about trust. It's about buyer and seller really getting a sense of each other and being able to trust the way they're showing up in that negotiation phase. Um, often there's a lot of emotion. Uh, the seller is letting go of something that they've built up. Um, and I think another big learning is having a, an independent advisor who can remain objective is a very healthy thing, kind of a facilitator uh, to keep things on track. But yeah, you know, both of those have been very helpful for us in this particular deal. It's, uh, your business is primarily in, in travel. It's been a tough few years. Um, what's enabled the businesses that have weathered the storm to continue to operate well? I think the, the you know, in terms of our guest house and B&B and hotel owners, uh, the people who've been in the industry a long time and really understand the industry have the best chance 
often a guest house owner, someone who's made money in IT or finance, and then comes in with very little ex experience in hospitality. And I think those particular clients have struggled more. Um, I think that it, it really does call for businesses to be very fit. So if you've put a manager in there and you've, you know, you're trying to hang out and not do much, those businesses have struggled. Um, and I think these, these smaller businesses are, are about connection and, and, and personal, uh, personal relationships. So you know, it's kind of that mine host thing. They've got to be around you know, at the bar at night, serving the breakfast and, and that personal touch. Um, and the other areas are on service. Those who are training their staff, hiring good staff, retaining good staff, they're likely to hang around longer. Your personal view on hiring staff in a small business, what's, what's the way to go about that? You know, so our view has always been to, to hire um, young, up and coming, trying to find their way uh, members of staff, people who are showing really good initiative, um, positive energy and ability to learn and then to work with that kind of raw talent and coach and train and have good systems and let people really grow with us. It's, it's helped our retention enormously. Um, and often you can hire someone with experience or a, a solid degree and the wrong personality and it's, uh, it doesn't fly. You know, Jim Collins always says in his book, Good to Great, you want to get the right people on the bus. It doesn't actually really matter where the bus is going. So, I mean, I'm not sure I agree with the second part, but if you've got the right people, you can do an enormous amount with a small business. So that's always been our focus, get the right people. Ian, in your business, you have customers that are both guest houses and travelers themselves. How do you manage keeping both sides of the equation happy? So we work quite hard internally around both our brand going the one way and going the other way. Uh, both of them require very clear uh, identifiers as to what our brand represents, either to the travelers or to the clients, the guest houses, the B&Bs, the hotels. And it, it adds a layer of complexity because it, it, in some ways you're speaking two different, two different languages. Um, and we really have to work hard to make sure that our staff internally understand what the brand represents both the one way and then to the travelers. You must have noticed, um, and certainly with the, the long history in the business, that there's been significant changes and a lot of those have been driven by the internet. How are you seeing that changing your business? Look, our business has shifted enormously into the digital space. Uh, we were the first to market to build apps for three of our products. Um, in the online space, it's, we can never compete with bookings.com or uh, Expedia. So, you know, one of, the, one of the things we always try and get very clear to our clients is that we're a marketing partner. We're bringing reach into uh, the traditional channels in terms of distribution of printed guidebooks, as well as social media, uh, the web, the internet uh, and, and in apps, in, in mobile, mobile devices. And that's a different thing to just concentrating one channel, being the, which is what bookings.com does. So it's a very competitive space, as I'm sure you're aware, the online space. Uh, with Portfolio especially, we, we've got a really nice niche there. In fact, a lot of our traffic is around the brand. Uh, so people search for Portfolio Collection, which is a, an enormous uh, comparative advantage to have over, over, other, over other brands. And we just keep working that space. We work our SEO, we work our AdWords campaigns, and we get very innovative around our newsletters, our blog site, which does really well, uh, and using Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest to, to, ramp, our, to ramp our traffic. With such a well-recognized premium brand, um, how do you make sure that you kind of keep it in the, the position that it's in? So Portfolio specifically has a, a very stringent benchmarking process where our consultants travel around the country all year to make sure that the establishments that we put in the guide are portfolio level. So th that really sets us apart. And our, and our strap line is trusted places to stay. So our, our travelers know that if they go and stay in a portfolio establishment, they can trust that place will be at the standard they expect. And that is, that is the cornerstone of the brand. It's, it's around trust. And we, you know, we, we make sure we don't, we don't slip up on that one. As a strong player in the travel industry, I mean, we're acutely aware in this country that uh, employment is a big issue and we're trying to create job creation. Um, travel in the tourism industry has been identified as an area where we can create a lot of, a lot of employment. What do you, what's your advice for a young entrepreneur kind of wanting to move into the travel industry? For me, it's all about getting experience. And that's, that's, that's like the traditional apprenticeship. So be prepared to go and do the hard yards for a few years on low pay, 
so that you can skill yourself up and, 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 and jump up a few, a few levels in the, in the food chain. Uh, I don't believe it's an industry where you can learn your way to, you know, to a high level of experience. That's, I think you've got to go and, you know, Otto Selig started out as the front office manager at the Herrenkracht Hotel, you know. He now heads up the biggest, one of the biggest hotel groups in the country. So, yeah, I think you've got to pay your dues in this industry and, and uh, start from the bottom. And for you guys, what does the future hold? Well, the future's all online. The future's all in the digital space. We're doing some very exciting things uh, in the app space as well. Um, and it's in, it's in our relationships, you know. Our big piece is that we continually need to add value to our membership base. And that is across the supplier platforms as well. So, you know, we can, we can bring um, opportunities to our members that they're just not going to get otherwise. Uh, Liz did a great deal with a credit card company years back that got low rates. And those things are, in, in what we do, really important to, for members to get that they're getting not just bums and beds, they're getting an added value service as well from their membership. Great, and that brings us on to our rapid fire questions. Ian, what's the best advice you've ever received? So I think from, from a book called Emith uh, around uh, making sure that your business could be franchised tomorrow. So your systems are strong enough, your staff are strong enough, and that your business is actually saleable. And your best moment as an entrepreneur? Yeah, I think, I think this acquisition of portfolio collection that we spoke about, uh, it's been a good process for us. And your biggest mistake? Biggest mistake was running a, a, a guidebook for a large city a tourism board. Uh, no membership base, three years of uh, eating soup with a fork. Not good. What do you look for in people that you work with? I think primarily initiative, ability to think on their feet, um, and positive energy. What qualities does an entrepreneur need? Resilience, ability to, to endure and carry on, and I think creativity, ability to innovate. What's the biggest inspiration to you as a small business owner? I think my father, I think I, you know, I was able to observe someone run a business their whole lives and uh, the freedom and opportunity that created. I, mean, I was always going to be an entrepreneur. What would you do differently? You know, that feeds back to Emith. I think I would have got good people on board earlier. I slogged it out quite a long time as a, as a small one or two person business and did everything myself. I would have done that earlier, a couple of years earlier. What makes South Africa a great place to be a small business owner? I think there's just so many opportunities in every industry. Uh, we, we largely unregulated. Uh, so the, the opportunities and, and the emerging markets. What keeps you awake at night? Sick children and barking dogs. <laughs> now, from a business perspective, I think unresolved conflict. And what gets you going in the morning? It's the run down the beach, swim in the ocean. Uh, I'm lucky enough to drive over a carps of Ach every day, so that kind of gets me in the mode. Thank you, Ian. And thank you for joining us. We look forward to the coming weeks. We will present further entrepreneurs in MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. I'm Paul Hobden. Goodbye and thank you.